Welcome to the video everyone. I'm going to be reviewing the Foxier box. It was kindly provided by Banggood for review, so thank you very very much Banggood. My video is usually quite long and this will be no different, however I'm going to change it up a bit and I'm going to get straight to the point about this camera. Is it any good? Bottom of my line is yes, it's very good for what it is. It's 4K, brilliant. The 2K 760 is ideal, 1080p 60 is brilliant. This is from the perspective of a FPV quadcopter uh, user. Would I recommend this? Yeah, wholeheartedly. It's a, it's a brilliant camera. It does have some shortcomings. However, they are moot points and personal preference. Uh, for example, I think it's micro B USB for charging. But you get a cable in the box, so that's nothing to worry about. The app is a little bit clunky to connect to every time, where you have to join the SSID and then load the app up. However, once you've got it set, you don't really need that. The microphone is absolutely brilliant. Picks up all the quadcopter noise and it's not blown out by the wind rushing past or anything, so it's nicely um, filtered. Maybe a bit of a fragile glass, but glass is fragile by nature. If you're worried about it, just get a spare glass. It'll take you 60 seconds to swap it out, no problem. I will be pitting this against the Runcam 3, however, there are plenty of videos online putting up against the GoPro session. Um, take a look at Josh Bardwell's or RC Shims, they go into great detail on that regard. I feel it's more of a competitor for the one cam freeze price range rather than the GoPro. I'll put some comparison shots up of the different modes and the one cam free shortly after this section. Uh, later in the video I'll put the what you get in the contents of a box and going through the app and all the settings in great detail and in the end part of the video I will put the complete flight videos using all the different modes. So. With that, I hope you enjoy this review. If you're looking for the short and sweet, get it. It's very, very capable, feature rich and versatile for its price point. Would I get this over a run cam free or a GoPro session? I think that depends where you want to get in. They're all capable cameras, but this is a step above the run cam free wholeheartedly. You've got a lot of powerful features in this camera that you don't get in the run cam free. So with that, please have a look at these comparisons and judge for yourself.
as you see by the comparison videos it has a very very nice picture the colors are very accurate whereas say the Runcam 3 they are a bit saturated shall we say the over overblown greens and funny hue on the blues however this re-watching the footage it did convey accurately the colour that I saw with my own eyes up there whereas the Runcam 3 is a little bit exaggerated shall we say. This is a 4K 30fps action camera in the style of the GoPro Session, Runcam 3 and a few other action cameras. Wow this looks amazing okay okay it comes in its own uh, bracket unlike the uh, normal ones it doesn't have a catch to release it uh, but it looks to just be releasable when you unscrew it okay Fox here branded 3M sticky pad the unit looks absolutely phenomenal so the power button mode switch from camera to video camera this looks to be the shutter button there's a little light here that signifies recording perhaps power there's a little LED down here as well it's a very very nice looking camera Rubberized. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. It's retained. Mini HDMI port, micro USB, and a micro SD card slot. You charge it through the micro USB slot. Okay, there's a little screwdriver in here or a Torx bit and that looks to be for the faceplate Torx screws or bolts a USB out to power and signal and ground this is obviously for FPV if you require so for aerial photography there's another little clip in sticky backed uh, attachment point this one is curved the obligatory USB charging cable and a user manual before we go any further let's have a look at the specs you get 135 degree field of view it has a 7 layer glass lens system um, and I'll go through that shortly uh, focal length for uh, 2.6 plus or minus 0.2 millimeters video modes from 4k 30 fps on the high end to 120 to 240 frames a second at 720p the main processor is an Amberella A12 S75 and the image sensor is a Sony IMX117 12 megapixel this will take 16 megapixel stills Bluetooth 4 and 2.0 has an onboard 950 milliamp hour battery it will operate on 5 volts if you provide it through the FPV harness the storage micro SDHC SD XC, USHI, uh, 16 to 128 gigabit support. I believe for uh, the high-end 4K video, you'll probably need something like a, a UHD card from, say, SanDisk or someone to take full benefit of it. But we'll give that a try. I've just run through the seven-layer optics system, but it has ghost reduction, correct uh, color layer, uh, a transparency filtered scattered light, uh, light correcting, sharpness and a UV filter. Um, you can see, I thought it was a 
CGI image on the product page originally because the lens looks so strange I don't know if you can see this it is a very very detailed lens and if you look at it at different angles you can see the lens work and it's magic very very interested to see how that's going to work it has external stereo microphone obviously there's an app for this that you can control all the settings and everything um, you can also get a little handheld dongle where you can turn it on and off and start recording uh, it's sold separately I believe this will apparently do an hour on its battery recording at 4k has a G sensor loop recording time lapse different modes but we'll get to that when we have a look at the app um, like night sport uh, black and white and some other filters like um, sepia 70s film this light here and this light here are the status lights um, this light at the back is the mode light this is IP64 rated uh, for water ingress so a little uh, splashes of rain here and there won't uh, phase it I don't believe however if you want to go diving with it or serious underwater usage uh, they do sell the watertight enclosure for it the dimensions are 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters let's see if this will fit in a run cam free GoPro session TPU mount for a quadcopter Okay, that took a little bit of um, excessive force to get it in there, however it is in there. Um, so we'll be sticking this on a craft and getting some really nice footage hopefully. Let's have a look at the manual. Stick a SD card in. Okay, I thought that went straight down and it didn't feel like it was going in looks to go in can you see that goes in at almost 45 degrees which is kind of strange but cool yeah, um, it's got a spring loaded detent on it battery charging you can update the firmware ok power on power on button for 3 seconds oh wow You're not gonna not realise what's recording, are you? Or wonder if it is or not. Okay. Power off. Hold for three seconds again. One, two, three. Okay, a slight delay. I believe you can have this auto start recording when it's powered on. Video mode is blue. Picture mode is green, apparently. There we go. It looks like it's two buttons in here, but it is actually just one, but uh, slightly elongated. I kind of like that. To turn Wi-Fi on and off, you will press and hold the shutter button. Force shutdown, press and hold power button for 15 seconds, and it will force the shutdown, which is always handy. Quick capture, EIS, uh, a stability only applies to 1080p 60 and 30 motion detection time lapse video looping video timing photo photo burst three five or ten photos every second auto photo take a photo every three five ten thirty or sixty seconds on screen display uh, auto off video timer alarm microphone volume that might be handy depending how you're recording sharpness white balance Exposure value compensation. The Fox Ear box has seven scenes normal flash, night, sports, landscape, portrait, sunset. Seven effects on top of that. ISO limit, center weighted metering, multi spot, and spot metering. Connecting to the camera via the app will just be load the app and connect it to the Wi Fi provided SSID. Default password is one through zero. Transferring files, just plug in USB or eject your SD card. So with that, 
I'm going to leave that here and then have a look at the app, connect to the camera and then think of the ingenious ways of putting this for its paces which I'm sure there will be many Okay, going to go through the app with the Foxy Box. First up, install the app. Just type in Foxy on the App Store and it will be the first result. First we need to turn the camera on. Wait for Wi-Fi to hook up. And we should be connected. The default password is 12345678910 I believe. Okay. Um, Foxy wrap. Hopefully the exposure is alright, so you can see. Okay, this is the default screen. You would get the information up there if you're still connected to your normal network with internet connectivity. Media is if you want to review your files on here. Me is just the same old stuff. Um, Foxy social network. Um, so what we do is hit camera, scroll left twice, and you'll get to the box. If you have trouble connecting to this, um, select the legend I believe and connect to it and it should initiate it. However, I just connect to the camera like that. So just put this on the side. Okay, this is the main screen that you get when you first log in or connect to the camera. Camera's name up here, mode video 1080p30. You've got your little configuration cog and your standby. That turns your camera off remotely if you require. Uh, your Wi-Fi signal strength, battery, make it full screen. Your record button is this blue circle down here. Then your options, for example the video camera, touch that and you can change it from video camera, time lapse, continuous, also burst and single shot for example. So that will take a picture, a single picture, 16 megapixels and that's done. Get an audible feedback on the camera once it's done. Uh, I'll just put it back into the video for now. Um, you can set the resolution and FPS through this uh, quickly and then this little stack is your media also. With that, the main thing you do on here is set your camera settings. So you hit the configuration cog. Okay, first up, the video. Then you have your photo settings and your camera. Video resolutions, here's where you select from 4K, 30 frames a second, 25 frames with supervision all the way down to your 720p with 240 frames or 120 supervision etc 4k 30 just a matter of tapping it and you'll get a tick next to it okay quality normal fine super fine or s fine you can have looping video recording slow motion is for when say you put it in 1080p 120 it will record at 30 frames a second but 4 times slower. Um, timestamp, I just put a timestamp on your video. Microphone volume, 100 down to 50 or off. Auto low light, EIS is the electronic image stabilisation. This is only on when you're in 1080p 30 and 60 in the resolutions here. Uh, I'm not sure if it works for the supervision, um, but it does say in the manual that it's 1080p, 60 and 30, so that might be worth a shot. Uh, moving on to the photo settings, what megapixel resolution, 16 down to 3. Uh, the quality again, normal, fine, super fine. And then your exposure is apparently how long the shutter is open for. Um, which could be interesting to get some nighttime traffic shots and so forth. And 
then we go down to these camera settings that are global light frequency it's 50 to 60 hertz depending whereabouts you are on the planet and what your power system is TV mode NTSC and PAL if for example you're looking for 30 frames a second in 4k uh, it's not listed it's only 25 frames a second it's more than likely that you're in PAL which affects the available resolutions as it does on many action cameras you go put it into PAL and 25 frames at 40k is only available instead of the 30 but we would expect and is it listed so just stick it in NTSC and you should be fine okay moving on metering your metering is where it decides your light sensitivity and wide dynamic range uh, center center spot or multi your sharpness strong normal and soft it seems soft is quite uh, popular at the moment and gives quite a good image uh, I've just left it at normal for now until I get used to the camera white balance this is a very important one if you really want a good shot set this sunny cloudy uh, flash fluorescent outdoor water EV comp this is your exposure value compensation scene mode is quite an important one as well normal flash night sports landscape portrait and sunset I'll run through those when I'm testing my camera. The effect is like filters, normal art, sepia, 70s filming, etc. Motion detection. Quick capture is when you turn the camera on, it will automatically start recording. Unsure exactly what dual files is, but it might be like a RAID system where it records to image files or something per shot. OSD will overlay record time and recording status if you are using the FPV out style wiring harness car DVR I assume on power it will start uh, turn on and start recording automatic off inactivity TV out if you need that on or off for the FPV the buzzer is audible feedback when you start recording and so forth Wi-Fi SSID and password set that to your heart's content and here we get to like the about information firmware date time format battery level, SD card capacity, do note you need a very very decent SD card um, I think I had to get a UHS 3 because just a class 10 just couldn't cope with anything other than taking an image fine camera, and sort of handy feature and then we just have default setting if you wanted to revert it to factory firmware version I'll go through that shortly uh, there is a version 1.1 available uh, there's only a very very small uh, change list of one item on it from memory however not all changes are documented are they? ISO limit unlike your other action cameras and the ones I'm used to where they're very limited with settings this has a very comprehensive set of settings that you may need to get a good understanding of to make full use of the, this camera to its, the best of its abilities okay, now we've had a look at the app I'm going to move on to putting it through tests and scenarios and see what images we get off of it last feature to show on here is automatic off hall of mirrors effect just gonna turn it off and that's the camera off
Hey, Hey.